Posteriorly approach the hip joint with this location according to the guns. A brief video. Acknowledgement to the authors and the editors of the book. Operative approaches in the orthopedic surgery and traumatology. This pre video presentation retreat from the book of operative or approaches in orthopedic surgery and traumatology. Thanks for the Firudun Kerschbaumer, Kuno Weiss, Karl Joachim Vritt, and Alexander Vaccaro. They contributed to science and medicine with their great book. Thanks for Professor Reinhold Gans for inventing this approach and deliver it to the humanity. Principal indications Femoral acetabular impingement, T fracture of acetabulum, transverse acetabular fractures involving the posterior wall, Pipkin fractures, osteochondritis dissecans of the hip. Intraarticular therapy of cartilage and bone damage due to the femoral head necrosis and hip resurfacing arthroplasty. Positioning of the patient. We recommend placing the patient in the lateral position with the symphysis and the sacrum supported and the operated leg on a form pad. The incision approximately 30 cm in length is the same as the one described by Gibson for posterior approach and curves posteriorly with the hip flexed. The fascia lata is simply distally and the incision is extended proximally and posteriorly into the upper areas of gluteus maximus. The leg is then extended and the self-retaining retractors or chani frame can be inserted. See the figure 9-1. The posterior part of the gluteus medius and its relation to the piriformis tendon can be exposed by incising the thoracanteric bursa and dissecting it posteriorly. This approach is continued according to guidelines published by Gans et al. Unlike the classic posterior, posterior approach, in the Gans technique, the blood supply of a femoral head is superior by preserving the vessels supplying it, including the short external rotators. The vastus lateralis muscle is the first retracted in anterior direction and anterior, anterior to the attachment of gluteus maximus tendon. And Hoffman elevator is passed beneath it. A shallow trochanteric osteotomy either level level or oblique is then performed with a saw and a stotum. Posterior tip of the trochanter is left intact to protect the vessels. The trochanter is then separated from the femur and dislocated in the anterior direction, preserving its muscle connection to the gluteus medius and vastus lateralis. See figure 9-2. To do this, it is necessary to wipe the residual fibers of the gluteus minimus from the posterior angle of the trochanter with a scalpel. With this osteotomy technique, the piriform fossa should not be touched. This renders the hip joint capsule, including the cranial boundary, readily visible. A Hoffman elevator can now be inserted over the anterior acetabular rim with, with the tie slightly flexed. It should be noted that the medial circumflex femoral artery and when run proximally beneath the quadratus femoris muscle and over obturator externus and subsequently flow of subsynovally into the capsule and femoral head. See figure 9-2. The blood, blood supply of the femoral head is also provided by more distal vessels and by anterior branches of the lateral circumflex femoral artery. The leg is now extended and the 
maximally externally rotated. This provides visualization of the entire superior and also inferior parts of the joint capsule. The capsule is now incised along the posterior and superior rim of acetabulum. Continued parallel to the more cranial iliofemoral ligament and then in caudal direction as far as the psoas tendon. In relevant posterior acetabular pathology, acetabular rim fractures or injuries to the posterior pelvic column, the capsule incision can be extended posteriorly and, in, and length, when the length internally rotated. Then the femoral head is dislocated gently with the thigh externally rotated and the flexed. And lower leg is placed in a sterile bag at the edge of the table. See figure 9-4. It is possible to, to notch the tendinous insertion of the piriformis muscle without endangering the vascular supply of the femoral head. The hip is now dislocated with the leg continuously, sorry, leg cautiously flexed and externally rotated. The lower leg is placed in a sterile bag. A Hoffman retractor can now be inserted anterior to the lab room with the second one posteriorly. And giving a complete exposure of entire circumference, circumference of acetabulum. See the figure 9-5. Should exposure of the acetabular roof be necessary? The reflected head of the rectus femoris can be detached and another Hoffman retractor can be inserted in the ileum benet the gluteus minimus. After the surgery or after the internal fixation, whatever we did, wound closure, after the reduction of the hip in extension and internal rotation, the capsule is sutured with a braided absorbable size one sterile material. The musculotendinous combination of greater tragantar, vastus lateralis and gluteus medius and gluteus minimus replaced and fixed it to the original osteotomy with tool size 3.5 or 4.5 cortical scripts. What are the dangers of this uh, type of osteotomy or this type of approach? Of course, trochanteric pseudoarthrosis has been described as a potential postoperative complication. Of course, heterotopic periarticular ossification may occur, especially after acetabular fractures. And of course, femoral head and neck are skeletalized ex excessively. Vascular injury in the form of partial femoral head necrosis is possible. Thanks for watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit channel.